there is, the best there ever was, the best there ever will be. And no, I'm not talking about Wayne Gretzky or Doug Flutie. I'm talking about Brett, the hitman heart. And Brett joins me here on the front page. Welcome. Thanks. Now, you've been in the news an awful lot lately, Brett, and uh, I just want to get you, give you the opportunity to give your side of the story about what happened at the end of your WWF tenure. Well, uh, it's, it's really sad because I think um, people should understand, I think, that somebody like myself, I had so much heart and soul sort of invested in the WWF, and uh, my... My, I take such pride in what I accomplished with the WWF. And I think to say that I was the, the, the hardest working, most loyal, most dependable, most, uh, you know, the, it, inside the ring and outside the ring, I was the best. And I still am the best. And I gave, that, I gave the WWF um, 14 years of maybe the greatest wrestling matches in the history of the, of the, of the business. I missed two shows in 14 years. Um, I worked myself up from the very, very bottom of the cards as a no-name, you know, uh, plus one other match, as I remember, to all the way to the very top. And I think I set a standard that uh, no other wrestler can ever, will ever accomplish or, or, or beat what I... I was the Cal Ripken of the <laughs> WWF. And uh, I think even more from a schedule standpoint, I did 250 to 300 days a year. I was away from my family for Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving, year in and year out. And I, I paid... You know, and I was, I've been financially rewarded by wrestling, and I'm, I'm glad of that. But at the same time, I made tremendous sacrifices to, to be a first-rate uh, wrestler for this company. And what happened for me was, was really not fair and not right. I, I was in a position a little over a year ago to sign with the WCW for uh, considerable, almost double, well, more than double the money. And I turned it down out of loyalty, out of respect for Vince McMahon and the WWF. Nine months later into my contract, the WWF came to me and basically said, we are, due to financial problems, we are going to break your contract. Mm -hmm. And we would like you as a favor to us, and we, we feel really bad about it too, but we, we would like you to go to the WCW, see whatever kind of deal you can get. Uh, hopefully you'll get a good deal and we'll be happy for you. And you'll be doing us a favor. You'll be doing us a service. And it, you know, for me, leaving, I, I've always looked at the wrestling business like a, a bit like a prison, you know, but I, I had the best prison cell. I knew all the prisoners in the prison and I, had, I knew all the guards and I was very happy in the WWF and to go to the WCW is like a, it's another prison and I don't know the guards, I don't know the prisoners and I, I wouldn't have the best cell in the prison anymore. But I kind of left and, and of course I've, I've done well, I've, I've made a much more lucrative contract, but the point is, that's not what I was in search of. I wanted to be with the WWF, and they, I started with a heavy heart, found myself going to the WCW and trying to strike a deal, which I did, and it turned out to be a very good deal, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, and I still, even then, offered the WWF. I said, let's not talk money. Just tell me you know, wh why, I, why I should stay, because they eventually came back to me and said, we can meet the money now. Oh, I see. Okay. So they came back and on the within a few days of me signing, they said, "We hold on now. We we've got the money in place now. We and you know we we have the financial relief." And I said, "Well, I've already gone this far. I have to hear what they say." And finally, it came down to, "Tell me what you can do to make me stay." Then I don't want to talk money. So I would have stayed for half the money again or less. And really, if um, if you want to know the truth, I think if you'd if I had stayed, you would have saw the, you would have seen the Hitman character torn down so much that it would have been a disgrace for me to, to have stayed there. And so I did leave, and I left, I thought, on good terms. And what came next was a situation where... Um, they stole your title. <laughs> yeah, they cheated me out of my title out of, in such a crummy way, in such a... It wasn't uh, a real good wrestling yeah, way, right? It wasn't it even was good for a good storyline. It was a horrible... It was a guy that worked 14 years, and... And one of the things I insisted on was that I would wanted to leave Canada as a hero, and I wanted to be walk out of the ring with my head up in Canada, and and that was about the only condition I made. And I suggested, and it was only a suggestion, that I get through this match on Sunday with my head up, and then on the following Monday in Ottawa, I thought it would be a nice place for a change, for me to graciously say goodbye to my fans and step down as champion and hand them the title and leave on a very nice note and say how grateful, which I would have been, uh, how grateful I was for, for the memories, the experience, and the, my history and my legacy. And, and they 
basically Vince McMahon said that that would be okay. And then the, right in the middle of my match, which make it even more humiliating, had Shawn Michaels put me in my hold. Uh, <coughs> right in the middle of me getting out of it, they rang the bell. Vince McMahon ordered the timekeeper to ring the bell. The referee bolted back to the dressing room. Shawn Michaels bolted back to the dressing room. Vince McMahon, I managed to spit in his face out of just just contempt and and uh, I was just so, so that wasn't part of the story no no not at all part of the story I was it broke my heart I think if you look at my the expression on my face you'll see the expression of a guy that gave everything uh, to be crapped on at the very very end for I, I'll never understand why they did to me what they did what bothered you the most about it was it simply the fact that you were being disgraced in Canada was that really or was it no, all the loyalty the was, or is there a combination all of things of it, all of it yeah. I just think that uh, um, it, 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 I've taken so much pride in what I've done for them, and I didn't see, I still will never see what the problem was with me leaving with my head up and leaving, and, and being able to, I picture myself now talking on Monday Night Raw in Ottawa and thanking everybody and saying a lot of the things I really wanted to say. It never happened, and instead I see what happened. I see this, this hero being trashed in the ring and, and humiliated and done in such a fashion, like the fact that Shawn Michaels had me in my hold. Sharp shooter, right? Yeah, it was just to humiliate me, and it was done in a way to kind of, I guess Vince McMahon wanted to show me that uh, he has the power to tear me down and destroy me. Uh, he built me. He's created this monster, or this well, not a monster, <laughs> but he created this persona, and it's his right to tear it down, and that's not true. It is, it, first of all, it was in my contract. In my last 30 days, I, have, I had reasonable creative control, which means I can't do anything that would tear me down, and that's why it was in there. And he breached that contract and broke that, uh, broke his word on that. He broke his word and lied to me in just before I went out, saying that this kind of thing would not happen. The the referee, I had talked to the referee the night before. And I said, I f feel something is, you know, amiss here, and I'm worried about what's going to happen mm -hmm. tomorrow. And I think they're going to come to you and and have you play some kind of a role in stealing the title from me. And he had tears in his eyes and told me that he would swore on his children's head that it would never come down to that. Because I think, again, I was respected in the dressing room as sort of a Cal Ripken, you know, that they would never do that to Bret Hart and he would never play a part in that. And when you see the referee jump up and do it so easily and run back to the dressing room, all that just, it's like, you know, I've had every single wrestler in the WWF, every one, with the exception of two, which would be Hunter Helmsley and Shawn Michaels, call me and tell me that what they did to me wasn't right and that uh, they, they feel for me and their hearts are broke. They're all locked into contracts that they can't get out of. But I will say this much, that if Vince McMahon was to offer any wrestlers a release, that if they're not happy in the WWF, that they're free to leave, I venture to guess that he wouldn't have a company tomorrow morning, that I think mm. you're looking at a lot of disgruntled uh, fellow wrestlers I was respected inside and outside the dressing room. And I don't think anyone sees their side to it. And as much as they distort the, and tell lies on TV and uh, distort the truth, the fact is I never did sell out. I, uh, I was, this was not over money. This was over basically a lot of it had to do with the direction that the company was going. Uh, the, the, the sexual content to the shows and, the, the, and some of the things that the direction that they've gone have been against my uh, uh, there's been some racist angles. There's uh, been some gay bashing. Is that what you're talking all, about? All, yeah, all that stuff. The racial thing was uh, um, that was a, a genius concept thought up by some guy in a suit and tie. To, and they don't realize that it's Bret Hart that has to climb into a car and, and drive out of the building and uh, speed as far as he can through red lights and stuff with uh, uh, cars following me and throwing bottles hmm. and stuff in my car. People take wrestling very, very serious. And uh, I certainly wouldn't want to be involved in a racial uh, angle and then they do things like that without even consider no consideration for my well-being or my safety or my family uh, it's it's totally um, again what Vince McMahon has tried to say is that I didn't honor the time-honored tradition of doing basically what he, what I'm told but in fact I was uh, at every right I had 30 days reasonable creative control of my contract and I think what it comes down to is wrestlers what he's saying is wrestlers have no say in what they're told to do. We do as we're told or we're out. And uh, I don't I, know anything. That's what you mean by, by the prison analogy. Well, I think <laughs> pr prison, I, my prison analogy is more like I've spent 21 years in these little boxes called hotel rooms and uh, 
and I fly around and, and I travel around, but I have really no life. I've, I've been in a different city every day. Mm -hmm. um, you never have a chance to really meet people or get to know people, and I have met people and I do know people, but to try to do it in a 24-hour span for 250 days a year, um, to say I've had any kind of a life for the last 21 years would be very hard to interpret. I mean, I've, I've, it's really been just like a prison, and I, I, hmm. it's a very lonely uh, life being a wrestler sometimes. Uh, before we run out of time, I want to make a little move here because uh, is that one of the reasons in talking about you haven't had much of a life is that one of the reasons why for instance you got involved with the Calgary Hitman and turned some of your attention to maybe your passion is, is wrestling's your career is, is hockey your passion I love hockey I mean I, I'm sure I would have been treated with a lot more respect if I'd been a hockey player you might uh, have hit a few guys pretty well too. I imagine I could have been pretty <laughs> physical but yeah. uh, um, at the same time I've always loved hockey I, I've um, I'm I am very Canadian. I mean, I've had every reason in the world to live in the United States and move to the United States. And uh, my mother's American, and I love America. And I've, I've been stuck in that scenario where I've been American bashing. But the truth is, uh, I, I love America, and I love Americans, but I'm Canadian. And I live in Canada for a reason. And I love hockey, and I love being Canadian. And I wouldn't live anywhere else but Calgary, which I think is the nicest place on the planet and uh, the greatest place to raise a family. And you've also done a little acting. Is, is this a new career for you? I or? hope so. I mean, I've, I've learned not to put too much faith in, uh, you know, I've had all kinds of concepts thrown at me from B-movies to big movies to TV series to um, little things. You know, and I've done real. I did Mad TV, which I loved. I, I did The Simpsons, which I don't know if you call that a big role or anything, <laughs> but it was a huge honor for me just to be part of that. I, I'm really happy with uh, Lonesome Dove, for example, who took me on as sort of like a walk-in and... It's like I got signed. It's like walking on the Dallas Cowboys and getting signed. It was like a, to me, it was a big honor and a privilege to get that kind of an opportunity over people that have acted and trained for it, and, and they gave a chance to me, and uh, and I did well with it, and I'm grateful for that, and I'm, uh, I've been really grateful for all the good turns I've had, and a lot of those have been through the WWF, and I'm grateful for all my matches. I think if people can look back at my matches, they'll see that I was not just your average wrestler. I was the greatest artist, the greatest storyteller, and the most credible and believable and maybe most uh, honest wrestler that there ever was. And uh, I hopefully they'll be able to go back and look at my matches and my legacy. But from from my sort of broken-hearted standpoint, and if you take all the money and everything else and take it all aside, I have no history anymore. Vince McMahon has just sort of erased 14 years of mm. um, dedicated, loyal service, and now it's like I don't exist. I exist in his mind as a, as a midget on these little wrestling shows where he's still hell-bent on sort of tarnishing and tearing me down, which is, you know, like I say, it kind of breaks my heart because I think mm. I deserved a better ending than that. So just very quickly, because we are out of time, uh When's the WCW debut? I'm not sure. It'll probably be in January sometime, and I can't wait. I can't wait to show everybody that uh, I'm worth every penny. Uh, well, we know that you think you are. I know a lot of your fans think you are as well. We don't have much time to talk about the WCW, so we'll invite you back, all right? All right? I look forward to it. Best of luck with the WCW, acting, hockey, wh wherever your career <laughs> takes you. Whatever's next. The best there ever will be. According to him, Brett the Hitman Hart. We'll be back with more on the front page right after this. Thanks.